this video is not for everybody if marriage triggers you if relationships trigger you please don't watch it if you're someone that desires marriage or desires to be in a healthy relationship these are things that i did that worked for me hey guys welcome to my youtube channel or welcome back to my channel if you are here for the first time hi my name is Belema ugulu in case you're seeing me for the first time and i got married about a year plus a year and some change ago and i just thought to share this video because i was just talking to my friend the other day and we we're talking about like marriage and like things that i had to do before i got married and then it just occurred to me that oh wait this is actually like valuable content that i should like share with my girlies and my guys so i think it can apply both ways so that was what inspired me to make this video yeah so a little backstory i got married to uh, a breathtaking beautiful man but apart from him being a beautiful man and all of that he is literally the man of my dreams and i'm not even going to lie i had little to do with it however the little i had to do with it was very very important and that is what i'm going to be sharing with you now i forgot to add that we have a baby boy his name is Zimuzo and you can see him in my previous videos and in my vlogs. So anyway, let's tell you five things I had to do before I got married or five things I had to do in order to be prepared to get married. Anyway, the first thing I had to do before I got married was let go and forgive. I know this might sound generic, but let me um, get a bit deeper into that for you. So the relationship I was in before I met my husband was absolutely terrible of course we had good times like every other relationship but now in hindsight when i think of it i had no business being in that relationship however it has come back to be like one of the best things to happen to me being in that situation because if i didn't go through what i went through then i would not have known exactly what it was that i did not want i mean i knew like in okay i don't want somebody that would this i don't want someone that would that but then i experienced what i did not want that made me stand knowing what was for me now through all that discovery process one thing i feel like really really held me back from finding my person was that i was so angry like i was so resentful i was so angry i felt very very like i just did not feel good emotionally and mentally i was always so upset i did a lot of things that i should not have done because i was angry or because i was upset in fact at the point i was even like oh my i didn't enter streets like i don't even want to be in any relationship like right now i just want to i just want to show my wickedness <laughs> be in the streets doing street things and putting myself first being very very selfish but then what would that have led to it would have led to me putting myself in more situations that i genuinely don't want to be in and situations that will not have benefited me anyway it was just me trying to get revenge was never going to get me what i wanted and my idea of revenge was very very warped because my revenge was putting myself first and then showing wickedness to other men on behalf of myself which was very silly i say all this to say that before i got married i really truly had to forgive and let go and i'm not going to lie to you that forgiveness and letting go process is painful because you're going to have to address things like for me i didn't even know that i was holding on to things from like years ago i mean like high school things like people did this to me all this person did that to me all this person did this to me the forgiveness part of this thing is not even just your exes it's like friends that have hurt you you have to bring that situation back to the front of your mind and say okay this happened to me this is how i felt this is how it affected me right so there was a point in my life where i had issues with friends i just didn't know i didn't get the idea of friendship one two i i just had issues with people not being good friends to me and so i like worried on myself that ah, i usually don't have good friends or oh i don't know how to be a friend and i just kind of wore that identity and then it was part of the things i had to bring up again and forgive myself for because part of that forgiveness process is you forgiving yourself for allowing yourself to be put in situations that were not beneficial to you let me even tell you a little story so when i started dating chris that's my husband i told him a few things but then there was one thing that was bothering me a lot it was a money issue and i was like i really am in a place where like i've practically wiped out my savings i really need this money i'm being old basically and i was explaining to him for the first time how like that whole thing happened how i ended up losing all the money that i lost and he really really helped me understand something and he said i want you to look at it as the money you paid to know exactly what you don't want for yourself and listen that was all i needed for me to forget that debt like he's not owing me it's kind of like getting refunded your school fees i don't want that I, I i got the service that i needed so keep it like that's your money you know so that completely changed my mind it really really helped me in my forgiveness process like 
I was able to forgive and let go truly and wholly, my heart became very very light but i'm not going to lie to you like i said before that forgiveness process is not easy like imagine bringing up something that happened to you in 2006 that hurt you and then you have to say where was i at fault in this issue where was my own problem here and then you have to forgive that person and also forgive yourself you will not always get an apology however you do have to forgive so you can move forward because i promise you if you are holding on to things in your heart your heart will not be free enough to let you accept what is good for you so number one thing forgive and forget no no you don't have to forget but forgive and let go if you need more help with learning how to forgive i would definitely recommend bible verses and also maybe like read about like the whole salvation story like what jesus christ actually did for us and everything it's really help you through your forgiveness process if you are a christian um you can also try talking to a therapist please don't go back to the person that offended you especially if it's like an ex you're not yet over because that going back you might not still get the closure that you want so forgive before getting an apology that's like the best thing you can do for yourself yes yeah, so that was the first one that was so long anyway the second thing i had to do before i got married was change my mindset completely about relationships marriage and men let me tell you why i mean like you know all those babes on twitter that are like oh men men are so this men are so that men are ugh. listen i was one of them oh. ah men why do men always feel like why do men always why are men always why are men ah i was a champion mm? men men this men that i would always have something negative to say about men men are scum i ah men are scum pro max i was i was the mm, scum ugh men ugh like that was my mo but then i'm um, at home praying that oh yeah god i pray that like you send me my person the person that is for me it's not going to be a man <laughs> but then i'm also saying that men has come so even if the right person comes how am i supposed to accept that person the smallest mistake you make i'll say hey is this coming you that's showing so i had to really 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 change my view on men i had to surround myself with stories of people in successful relationships i followed couples that were in like good relationships i don't mean perfect i mean like people that were authentic like people that are putting out content that is edifying and like real not come here to say oh yeah we're always so happy we're always skin cocking cocking no and then also i started to mute accounts on twitter that were always talking about like men being scum and men being irrational men this men that men that no that's not what i want for myself i want a good man so when i see somebody posting about oh my man did skin cocking 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 and it was like a really good deed um digesting that tweet or that post or that youtube video i changed what i allowed myself to accept was the norm when it comes to men and not only did i change i actually stopped saying things like men will shame you men will embarrass you men are this men are that no like i had to start saying that my own will not embarrass me my own is not a scum do you understand like ah my own husband is going to be this my husband is going to be that my mind is going to be this my mind is going to be that ah my husband will take care of me and shout out to auntie bola that's one of my aunties in fact my mommy mommy <laughs> she will always tell me like wh whenever i tell her oh this uh, me i don't want this me i don't want that she always say my daughter what i want you to always say is what you want leave the things you don't want alone start talking about the things you want and that really changed my mindset when it came to this whole relationship and marriage thing and i would say that that was a very very major thing that change of mindset that oh men will shame you my man will shame me <laughs> by the grace of god it's by the grace of god oh, we are trying every day oh, as <laughs> With every day we wake up, we're trying not to shame each other. I mean, do you understand? But like by God's grace, you know, he will not shame me. Me too, I will not shame him. <laughs> so the third thing I had to do was allow myself be loved. And I had to show myself the love that I wanted. So let me give you a practical example. So something as little as like I, when I wake up, I want my husband to like tell me I'm beautiful. I want to feel like the most beautiful girl in the world. Guess what? When I wake up, I'm like, hi, beautiful. Hi, beautiful, Bella man. And I go to the mirror and I'm like, hi, beautiful, babe. Good morning, fine girl. Like, how are you doing? Like, I speak to myself the way I want to be spoken to. When I don't feel like cooking, I buy myself something because why? I want my husband to do that for me. So I completely changed like the the, the need to feel suffer ahead in order to be loved. Like I, I I changed the idea that I have to suffer before I'm loved. Does that make sense? I hope that makes a lot of sense and I hope I'm communicating this the right way. But in essence, what I'm saying is the love that I wanted from outside I started to show myself that love. Basically, it's starting to pay more attention to myself and loving on myself, giving myself the love that I wanted someone else to give me. And so when that love came, it didn't feel like 
I don't deserve this love. Oh, I don't deserve this. No, like I kind of felt like, although, although I have to admit, like my husband's love is, is love that I'm like, ha, ha. Hey, from where to where? Like, I, I enjoy him a lot. I'm not going to lie. But I will be the first person to admit to you that I've not always been the person that felt like I was deserving of the kind of love that I receive now. I had to really, really get myself in a place where I'm like, no, like, I deserve that. There's nothing wrong with me having full, complete, deep, intense, beautiful love. So I showed myself that to the best of my ability. And that included things like not putting myself in situations that would harm me in any way, whether emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever. I'm not trying to harm myself. Investing in myself to where I feel good about me, you know, like just basically showering myself with love. Like sometimes I'll just buy myself a lot of things for no reason. Oh, but mama, you want that? Don't worry, I'll get it for you. <laughs> like just stuff like that. And also, like I spoke very, very nicely to myself. I stopped the whole, ah, oh, I'm so stupid. Why did I think? Of? No. Like I don't, mm -mm. like I started to speak to myself nicer and it made such a difference, like loving on myself more than I have ever loved on myself before. This might sound like a very small thing, but I'm telling you, it makes a whole lot of difference. So now to number four is like the most important thing is I learned to communicate effectively and I learned to apologize. So there is communication and there's effective communication. When you communicate, you're saying something in a way that the other person can hear you. When you communicate effectively, the other person understands you. So in order to make sure that you're communicating effectively, a few things that you can do. Number one is make sure you articulate what you're trying to say properly. Say it like you're talking to a five-year-old and assume the other person you're talking to is a fool. Like the person does not even say, in fact, the most basic level of understanding is where they're at. I very, very much believe that how you say something is more important than what you're saying. So I had to learn how to communicate effectively and in the language that that other person will understand i don't mean like french spanish whatever no there are certain people that you speak to them with tough love and that is their language like they get it immediately there are certain people that once you bring that tough love thing near them it triggers trauma for them so you have to learn the next person you're speaking to and how to communicate to that person in a way that they would understand effectively do you understand what i mean and then another thing is saying sorry okay so i didn't realize that i I really was not a sorry person. I'm not apologizing to you. If anything, I'm going to tell you why you are wrong. And you will end up apologizing to me. Because I just felt like, it's you that doesn't understand. You you don't get it. Because I've thought this through and I know I'm right. But then that's not true. Like, I'm not always right. And many times I would need to apologize. I would need to say sorry. Sorry should not come hard to me at all. And I'm not even going to lie. Like, my husband made this easy for me. Because to say sorry, you know, they had him. If he's wrong, he'll say, ah, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. And also, he's an excellent communicator. So he helps me with this number four. Because my, my way of communicating before when I was upset is to just be silent silent treatments, carry my face, was, mm, mm, mm. but then that doesn't help, especially when it comes to marriage. So if you're the kind of person that is very, when I'm angry, I cannot extend love. When I'm angry, I treat the other person like they're my enemy. That's very wrong. Don't do that. That was me before. Don't do that. It's okay to like take a break. If you need like time to gather your thoughts and gather yourself together, that's fine. But make sure you are able to sit down and say, this is how I feel. This is how what you did made me feel. Is this what you meant when you did this? Because many times, what we don't realize is that our response to certain things is just trauma. Like, you, you're just responding from a place of defense because of something that happened to you previously. And I'll just throw this in here. That one of the things that my husband and I had to really do before we got married was address triggers and traumatic events. So, okay, why do you, when, when I talk to you like this, why do you, like fold when i talk to you like why do you get defensive you know like just have these necessary conversations before we actually like decide to move forward in our relationship but i say that to say this don't stop learning like learn every day how to be a better person and on that being a better person is extending kindness i said this on my instagram but being kind and being nice are two different things and i was saying that kindness comes with the intervention of the holy spirit because niceness basically has an element of selfishness in it. Kindness does not. Whether or whether or not you accept or you do not accept, I will be kind to you regardless. It really, really takes like a lot of Holy Spirit intervention to be a kind person. But kindness and consideration are key parts of maintaining and having a successful relationship. The fifth thing I would say I had to do before I got married was be very, very honest to myself. That was a painful process because I had to tell myself that, okay, these are the things I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with that. And it shattered my perception of me being like, I mean, I'm not perfect, but like out of 100, I'm maybe like a good 
a good 19. <laughs> I sat down with myself and by the time I was done, I'm like, ha, huh, if they give me 40 self, I'll be happy. <laughs> I just realized that, yo, like, I had a lot of work to do emotionally, mentally, physically, everything. But it started with what, me being honest to myself. So that's my number five. Be very honest to yourself. There are all these like journal prompts. I even have like journal prompts that I sell. I'll link them in the description box below where you can answer these questions and really, really get to know yourself on a deeper level. It's really help you through like life and this whole premarital phase so if you watch this video to this point thank you so much i pray that whatever you desire for yourself god will grant to you according to the will of him for your life according to his will for your life anyway thank you so much for watching this video make sure you give this video a thumbs up let's see if we can get to like 200 likes on this video let's see i'll drop more videos like this because i feel like um even if it just helps one person i'm satisfied so yeah give this video a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to my channel so you know when i post a video and click on that notification bell so you get like an actual notification when i post my next video see ya